We've all seen the Planet of the Apes movies, right? Well, what about a terrifying monkey takeover in real life? If you want to know what caused this massive invasion, you're going to have to stick with me. Plus, I'll show you a whole host of eye-popping things you've probably never seen in your life. Like this dude swimming under a frozen lake. Babies inside these odd-looking contraptions. Or these mind-blowing coins with plenty of hidden secrets. Sound good to you? Well then, let's get into it. Are you afraid of snakes? Do their scaly bodies, yellow slitty eyes, and flicking forked tongues give you the heebie-jeebies? What about this guy? Would you run in the opposite direction if he slithered into your path? This bizarre serpent is the Arabian sand boa, and it looks like the living product of an eight-year-old child's attempt to draw a snake from memory. The species can be found in the Arabian Peninsula and Iran, where it spends its days buried in the sand which seems pretty reasonable considering the temperature can hit 50 degrees Celsius during the day. When they do come out, which is mostly at night, they chow down on small reptiles like geckos. Apparently, the reason why it seems to have tiny googly eyes on top of its head is so that it can easily see what's going on above ground while it's still buried. Snakes also have clear scales over their eyes called eye caps, which come off when they shed. So there's no need to worry about this derpy little dude getting sand in his peepers. We can't all expect to be born talented musicians. I don't know about you, but I can't even master the triangle. Some people take their musical aptitude to the next level by mastering instruments you've never even heard of before. Like this guy. That's right, you can officially play the stones. Just kidding. This is actually an ancient instrument known as a lithophone, which is demonstrated here by archaeologist and professor Dr. Jean-Lou Ringo, who specializes in prehistoric music. That's right, what you're seeing here is a bona fide old school rave. The instrument works kind of like a xylophone, but is made up of various rocks that create chime-like sounds when they're caressed by other stones. In fact, the lithophone is still used in traditional Vietnamese areas to this day. Check out this Raglai woman in the central highlands of Vietnam showing off her Dan Da, a traditional lithophone of the ethnic groups in the region. Pretty neat, right? The ocean is home to such a diverse and colorful range of creatures that it's impossible to keep tabs on everything that exists below its murky depths. Have you ever laid eyes on one of these mystical beings before? These surreal little beasties are adorably known as sea angels, and they look more like Pokemon than actual living, breathing animals. Sea angels or pteropods are actually a fascinating group of sea snails that spend their entire lives swimming or drifting in the ocean, never once touching the bottom. They can be found all over the world from polar regions to tropical seas, and they get their nickname from their wing-like appendages called parapodia, which flap around on either side of their gelatinous, transparent bodies. Don't be fooled though, sea angels are minuscule creatures and the largest species, the naked sea butterfly, stretches just five centimeters long. Although they don't look threatening, sea angels are actually carnivorous and spell disaster for the equally beautiful sea butterflies, which they ensnare in sticky mucus webs and gobble down as a snack. Did you have any idea that these mystical creatures existed in our oceans? Once you recover from the revelation that maybe Pokemon isn't so far-fetched after all, you should totally hit that like and subscribe button and show the little bell icon some love too, just to make sure you never miss finding out more little-known facts about the world around us. Did I mention that Sea Angels are big Be Amazed fans too? Okay, okay. Let's get back to it, shall we? There are plenty of famous theme parks and attractions in the world, but there's only so many times you can visit Disney World before it becomes a little tiresome. If you're looking for something a little different to spice up your day out, why not head to Le Machine de Lille, also known as the Steampunk Wonderland. Located in Nantes, France, this creative metropolis is a combined art installation and amusement park, which brings the bizarre world of science fiction writer Jules Verne to life. This island in the center of the city opened its gates in 2007 and offers carnival-style rides and smaller machines unlike anything you've ever seen before. Visitors can climb aboard giant spiders and worms among tons of other badass steampunk creatures, but the biggest showstopper by far is the 48-ton mechanical Grand Elephant, which carries 50 riders as it stomps through the park looking down on the puny humans below. 
Life beneath the waves is certainly more mysterious than we can imagine. And what's the deal with sand dollars? You know, those flat coin-like shells with a stunning star shape stamped on the side that people love to collect when they get washed up on the shore. I'll bet you've never seen one alive before. Also known as sea cookies or snapper biscuits, sand dollars are actually a species of flat burrowing sea urchins belonging to the order Clypasteroida. When they're alive, they're actually a purplish brown color and their fuzzy spines are covered in tiny flexible bristles called cilia, which they use to move around and transport food to their central mouth. When they die, their skeletons get bleached by the sun, turning them white, and the small spines fade away. The star on their backs, which consists of calcium carbonate plates arranged in a five-fold pattern, become more visible when they die. So next time you collect sand dollars at the beach, just remember, you're literally collecting corpses. Speaking of dollars, you're gonna wanna grab your wallet for this next mind-boggling nugget of info. Got it? Right, now dig out a standard dollar bill and look for the hidden spider. Don't see it yet? Turn the dollar sideways and pay special attention to the upper left corner of the large number one on the bill, and you should see a tiny arachnid poking his head out from behind the white border. There's plenty of speculation about why this hidden addition exists. Some say it's just an accidental occurrence from where the webbed line vary in design, while others claim it was intentionally placed as an anti-counterfeit measure. Some also claim to see an owl or a skull and crossbones rather than a spider. But whatever it is, I bet you've never seen it before. What do you see? Spider, owl, skull and crossbones, or something else entirely? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll get back to some of you. And if you have any amazing internet tidbits to share with the world, why not write in and let me know? Just send any footage or images you have online to clips at beamazed.com and you'll earn yourself a shout out in the next episode if it gets featured. Most of us can only dream of unearthing a precious stone, but there are people out there who have dedicated their lives to hunting down gems. And sometimes the payoff can be huge, literally. Thomas Nagin is the host of a show called The Mineral Explorers, and what you're seeing here is a massive piece of quartz being extracted at the Coleman Quartz Mine in Arkansas in 2014. Alongside Arkansas, one of the only other places such excellent quality quartz can be found is Brazil. There are many different varieties of quartz, several of which are considered semi-precious gemstones. Since antiquity, quartz have been among the most commonly used minerals in the making of jewelry and handstone carvings. They may not be the most valuable gemstones out there, but happening upon chunks as big as the ones these guys dug up are sure to score a pretty penny when sold together at auction. Honeycomb is one of the sweetest treats known to man. But how often do you get to see one whole before it gets whizzed up and jarred for honey or used in ice creams? Well, here's a sweet fix for you. Have you ever seen something so strangely satisfying? All that sweet, sweet honey oozing out would probably make for some incredibly sticky hands though especially if you decide to do it with your bare hands like this woman. Before you go squeezing to your heart's content though, you should probably know that it totally destroys the honeycomb. For honey to be extracted properly, it is usually spun and filtered using an extractor before allowing it to settle and then bottling it up. It definitely requires a whole lot more patience than just crushing the comb with your bare hands. But well, just spare a thought for the poor little bee colony that poured their little hearts into making it in the first place. Unless you're a parent, or even if you are one, the chances are you probably haven't seen this before. Before you get all up in arms about how much these kids are suffering, I should probably tell you that these babies aren't actually in any danger. They're just being x-rayed. The uncomfortable looking contraption is known as a pigostat, and it was designed back in the 1960s to prevent children from being exposed to radiation during x-rays. Part of the reason why all the kids pictured inside one look so uncomfortable is that their bottom half dangles freely out of the machine while their arms are hoisted permanently above them. Using the Pigostat means technicians can capture a picture on the first attempt without the baby wriggling around. Apparently, it's not so common to see one of these contraptions nowadays, which kinda seems like a good thing. Anyone else think it totally looks like that scene in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where Augustus Glue gets stuck in the chocolate tube? Being a farmer is more stressful than you can ever imagine. 
especially when a whole host of unforeseen circumstances could spell the end of your livelihood in an instant. When a fire broke out during the heat of summer in July 2013 in an 80-acre field in West Country, Colorado, local farmer Eric Howard knew that he had to think fast before the flames engulfed valuable crops, which were nearing completion. Howard hopped into his tractor and followed the edge of the fire to create a border which would act as a protective shield between the flames and the delicate crops. By preventing the fire from spreading any further, Howard was able to successfully protect over half the field from being destroyed in the blink of an eye. After driving so close to the flames, even the paint on Howard's tractor began to blister, so it's hard to imagine the heat he must have been facing behind the wheel. It's true what they say, not all heroes wear capes. Just denim jeans and boots, am I right? We can all dream about being able to communicate with animals, but there is one universal language we share with them and that's the language of love. Most people have a favorite pickup line or a party trick to get someone's attention at a crowded bar, but not the hooded grebe. They do this instead. This footage, which shows an elaborate courting ritual, was captured by Michael and Paula Webster for the film Tango in the Wild, and it's an incredibly rare sight. The hooded grebe is a critically endangered bird that breeds on a few basaltic lakes in the interior of Santa Cruz in the extreme southwest of Argentina. This feathered flirt wasn't even officially discovered by scientists until 1974 because it lives in one of the most remote and inhospitable environments on Earth. During the breeding season, they set up their nesting colonies on lakes in the arid Patagonian steeps and very few have been lucky enough to watch them dance their little hearts out like in this clip. No. Do you ever feel like you just want to disappear on the spot when something totally embarrassing happens? Well, you should probably take some tips from this dude. This stealthy son of a gun is Reddit user Mossberg91. In case you're wondering how a human can just vanish into the shrubbery in a blink of an eye, the answer is simple. Make yourself a ghillie suit. In plain terms, a ghillie suit is a type of camouflage clothing designed to resemble the background of a natural environment like foliage, snow, or sand. Typically, it's constructed using a net or cloth garment covered in loose strips of burlap, cloth, or twine made to look like leaves and twigs. But real leaves or moss can also be used to really blend in. These types of suits are mostly used by military personnel, police, hunters, and nature photographers who want to conceal themselves from enemies or targets, and you'd be surprised how hard it is to get it just right. To prove just how seamless Mossberg suit is, let's check that out one more time, but backwards. There are plenty of rare coins in the world, but none are quite as unique as the ones created by master engraver Roman Boutin. This Russian artist taught himself to engrave by watching YouTube tutorials before making the jump to turn his passion into a full-time career. And boy, did it pay off. With a wild imagination, a steady hand, and heaps of patience, Boutin takes regular nickels and turns them into mind-blowingly intricate works of art. The preferred canvas for his work is the silver U.S. Morgan for its size and thickness, and by the time he's done working, each coin is transformed into a total one-of-a-kind collector's item. Their artistic designs aren't the only thing that makes these coins so special, though. Many are also fitted with secret layers and hidden booby traps like springs, levers, and trigger doors, which Boutin adds using miniature mechanics. If you're wondering how to get your hands on one of these fantastical coins, Boutin sells them online and at auction. And it's fair to say that they can fetch a pretty penny. I'll see myself out. Seeing something close up for the first time can change your perspective on it altogether. Just take a long, hard look at this, for example. What exactly are you looking at? Some sort of strange mutant vegetable, perhaps? In fact, this is actually an elephant's tail. Believe it or not, it isn't fine, soft hair that covers the tailpiece of the largest land animal on Earth, but large, thick bristles. Elephants' tails have a whole host of uses. They use their tails to communicate like dogs by wagging them to signify happiness or excitement. Baby Ellie's also hold on to the tail of older elephants while they travel across the plains in large groups for added security. Most importantly, this hefty tailpiece works as an efficient fly swatter, which elephants use to swipe away annoying biting flies. Sometimes it seems like us humans could really do with a tail too, right? Ever since antiquity, humans have used bricks to create roads and footpaths. Brick roads are easy to repair and replace and are robust enough to tolerate water and freezing without forming cracks. 
but laying the bricks themselves was once a long and complex task. That is, until the last decade or so when the process was transformed entirely. This machine, which seems to be powered by black magic, is known as a road printer, and it is capable of creating a road with as much ease as laying down carpet. Bricks are inserted into the machine and assembled vertically before they slide down the ramp slowly and rest on the ground. There's something so satisfying about watching the machine at work, and using a road printer can allow pavers to assemble 500 meters of road a day from 3 to 20 feet wide. Talk about efficiency. What's the craziest thing that's happened in your city? Whatever it is, I'll bet it pales in comparison to this mob of angry monkeys swarming the streets for as far as the eye can see. This bizarre event occurred on March 11, 2020 in Laburi, Thailand, and was filmed by a local man who was probably just as baffled as anyone else unfortunate enough to witness what has since been dubbed the macaque attack. Apparently, the whole ordeal was the result of a turf war between four rival monkey gangs, each of which are around 500 to 600 monkeys strong. When one of the gangs managed to scavenge a bunch more junk food than the others, the gangs living on the other side of the busy intersection decided to launch a jealous attack. Terrified residents barricaded their doors as the monkeys ran roughshod through the city, leaving a trail of trash and excrement in their wake. Even on a regular day, the fearless primates rule the streets around the Prang Sam Yad Temple in the center of Laburi, patrolling the tops of walls and attacking parked cars. The problem has gotten so out of control that a government sterilization campaign is now being waged against the creatures after the epidemic provoked an unexpected change in their behavior. You try sharing your home with a troop of angry monkeys. Have you ever had a nightmare where you're trapped under ice, unable to break through to the surface? Did it look something like this? Who else held their breath while watching that? This absolute daredevil, or madman, depending on how you look at it, is freediver Peter Capoon. There are some pretty incredible athletes in the world, but some people go to the extreme with their impressive feats of sportsmanship. In case you didn't know, freediving is a form of diving that relies entirely on holding your breath while underwater rather than using any breathing apparatus like scuba gear. Capoon took things a step further on January 23, 2019 when he freedived directly under the ice of a frozen Lake Malata in the Liberac region of the Czech Republic. Capoon is no stranger to being below the surface and glides under the ice like a ghost, but it's safe to say this is definitely one thing you shouldn't try at home. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Nope, it's a moth? Moths may not be the most stereotypically exciting creatures on the planet, but if you were to lay eyes on the hummingbird hawk moth, you'd probably mistake it for an elegant hummingbird. The clue is in the name, after all. This fuzzy insect is so effective at imitating its feathered counterpart because of its enormous size and inch-long proboscis, which darts from flower to flower, collecting nectar. Unlike most moths, which have a tapered abdomen, the hummingbird hawk moth also looks so bird-like because it seems like it has tail feathers. The unusual species can travel at surprising speeds of up to 12 miles per hour and continues to fly regardless of bad weather which makes it one of the most robust species of butterflies and moths in the world. If I were a bug, I certainly wouldn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Most people would say flying without hesitation, right? Sadly, it's unlikely humans will evolve wings and take to the skies anytime soon. But there is another way you can soar with the birds, and I'm not just talking about hopping on an airplane. 60-year-old Christian Malek from Lorient, France has earned himself the title of the Birdman for his unconventional career spent flying alongside some of the world's migrating birds. It all started back in 1995 when Malek discovered that lesser white-fronted geese were struggling with their migration from Germany to Sweden. The meteorologist decided to adapt a two-seater ultralight aircraft to fly alongside the vulnerable species to guide them on a safer migration route. Nowadays, Malek has adapted his migration plan into a one-of-a-kind experience for tourists who can expect to join him for a 35-minute plane ride with his avian companions. It's all fun and games until a goose mistakes you for one of its own during mating season. Which of these things made your jaw drop open the most? If you think your brain can take more amazement, you should totally check out one of the previous episodes from this series. I'll put them on the screen for you now. And don't forget to write in at clips at beamaze.com with any more amazing things I should see, 
And as always, thanks for watching, guys.